Welcome to the Lighting Your Way podcast. I'm your host, Guardian Nurses founder, Betty Long. During season three, we'll be delving in deeper to the amazing lives and stories of nurses and other healthcare professionals from around the country. We'll also be talking with a few of my nurse advocate colleagues at Guardian Nurses. You'll get a behind the scenes peek at the healthcare system, as well as get advice on how to get the best care when you or a loved one is a patient. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Lighting Your Way podcast. On today's episode, we feature a story by Andy Votendahl, one of our Seattle nurse advocates who has been on the podcast before with a very compelling story, but we think this one beats that one. So sit back, relax, uh, and enjoy this very compelling story about a patient that Andy's been working with for the last year. Welcome to the Lighting Your Way podcast, Andy Votendahl, uh, our nurse out in Seattle, Washington. Uh, it is uh, good to have you back. You have been a guest on uh, our podcast before, but um, just to refresh, yeah, refresh our listeners' memories. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? Why'd you become a nurse? You know, tell us, tell us a little bit. Introduce yourself. Okay. Well, I am a third generation Seattleite, always lived in Seattle, always lived in the middle of the city. Oh. Never, you know, yeah. So I've been on the right on first hill or around there for most of my life. Wow. Um, and uh, we, my family grew up on Capitol Hill. It's a, it's a very large Catholic neighborhood, but with a lot of Broadway is the the crazy street and lots of fun. And so I grew up around a lot of people. Mother had anybody who didn't have a place to live, lived at our house. And so it was always people around us all the time. Okay. And I had a lot of health issues as a kid and spent a lot of time in the nurse's office. Mm. And when you asked, you asked me this before and I thought about it more, I remember my junior high school counselor saying to me, I was the nurse's TA. I wasn't really into nursing, but because yeah. I wasn't healthy, I was always in the nurse's office. So she put <laughs> me to work. And so, um, uh, and so my counselor, who is Miss Lily, I will never forget her, little short, Miss Lily, stocky Lily. I think she was the basket, girls basketball coach. Okay. She said, what are you going to do? It's junior year, Andy. What are you going to do? you're going to college, what do you want to do? And I wanted to be an, you know, I was thinking maybe an anchor. I didn't want to be a journalist. I just wanted to be the anchor, right? And she okay. says to me, why don't you think about going into nursing? You're always in the nurse's office. You're the nurse PA. You do all the, the, the measuring of all the students and the visual chat. Why don't you do that? And I'm like, well, golly, I I guess, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So it's you were easily, just, you were I, easily led, Andy. Yeah, and then I did running start uh, for to be a nursing assistant on my senior year. Uh -huh. So I learned all about how to be a nursing assistant when I was still in high school. So when I graduated, I got right into a nurse tech position. Um, and so I was in the hospital from seventeen on, wow. and. Um, I just, I love it. It's, it's, uh, I was like, I was meant for this. <laughs> and I always think, thank Miss Lily for, for pointing it out to me. <laughs> um, the, it's crazy. I can't believe that this woman knew me more than I knew myself. <laughs> and so, well, anyway, you were, so you were, yeah. only, you were only 17 after all. Come on. Yes, right. And that was her job was to point, you know, figure these things out for kids. So yeah, I, I applied to a bunch of schools and got accepted to UW right away. And that's how I became a nurse. And wow. I've been nursing in Seattle uh, since then, all different types of stuff. And dare I ask how oh, many years that has been? Uh, 32 years. Con congratulations. 32 and yeah, after that's a after long time. all these years, what gets you up in the morning? The people. You know, it's really just the relationships. And 
you know, it feels good when they say thank you for being there and all of that. But mm -hmm. it feels better just to like to, today. I actually went and visited a a gal who's uh, five months since her COVID infection, uh, intubated, long time, ventilated, all the business, and she's finally off oxygen. And and that's what she, her husband said. You got to come see her. You got to see the good part. So I. Right. I get she was it just I just left there practically in tears. It was so beautiful and the kids were there and it just you know, that's what I like to see is the I guess what happens when I give the care or hold that person's hand or whatever it is. It just feels good. Yep. And um I like walk it watching people walk down the hall to be discharged. It's it's <laughs> like, Oh yay. So <laughs> another um, one. So, so yeah, tell people me. People say that I care. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, people can't say that I care more about other people than myself. So, um, like I, you know, I don't know that I would go out of my way for somebody else before I would take care of myself. So, well, I, I, I have to say, I think that is a nursing personality trait as well as a, a female personality trait. Caregivers. Oh, there you go. I, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we deal with that a lot as nurses that we're always thinking about other people and often yeah. not thinking about ourselves. And I think moms do that. You're a mom, you know, like moms do that. Yep. Women do that, you know, so, mm -hmm. so don't beat up yeah. on yourself. You're, you're, you're perfectly normal. <laughs> I have called patients and actually said, I hope I'm not calling too much. And they're like, what? No, <laughs> call any time. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll call tomorrow. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so, anyway. so um, tell us about, like, I know it's been a while since you've been on, but so tell us about what the, describe the current position uh, that you're, you're in. You've been a mobile care coordinator uh, for the mm -hmm. Sound Trust uh, Health and Wellness Program. So tell us, tell our listeners what that looks like day to day. Well, I, um, I, we get, we work off of an inpatient report. So when people go into the hospital, they send us a report and we see those people on the report and we reach out to them. Most of them are still in the hospital. So it's maneuvering through a hospital system to find them. And my role is really to introduce myself, tell them that this is a great benefit. I am a nurse in your back pocket. And I have 32 years experience and I can, I've been through healthcare systems. I know how to maneuver through the system. I know healthcare. I know how to care for patients. I know what the expectations are. And I'm here for you. And it's really unconditional. They're at first are like, so what's the, what's the deal here? Is there some kind of deal here? Like, do I have to pay something later? Or they right. still can't believe it. And I say, no, I'm, I'm really just, the trust has hired me to be sure that you get the best care possible to live the healthiest life you can. And I'm going to get you there any way I can do it, any through <laughs> support, through advocacy to, and a lot of times folks will, will not believe that this can happen, that they can get better. And they're shocked when they do and go, wow, I really, this is great, you know, like this woman today yeah. uh, who I went to visit, who no, none of us knew if she was going to make it or not. So after I meet the people and I establish a relationship, that's when I become a mobile care nurse. So I say to them, you know, I don't just sit behind this desk. I come to where you are and where your family is. And I come to, to, you know, help take care of you or meet your family or go to doctors. So I say, I go to doctor's appointments with you. I come into the hospital. If it weren't for COVID, I would be there right now. <laughs> and um, and um, I will come to the house if you're having trouble with medication or you just want me to see how you maneuver through the house or you want me to see how you set up your wound care station or whatever it is. Um, today I went for a social visit just to see people talk. And this is the other thing. People want to talk about their experience, mm -hmm. right? They want to tell 
their story about what happened to them, Mm -hmm. especially when they're not, they're usually healthy people. They want me to sit down with them and they want to tell me everything about what happened in the ER, when they went up to the room, who the nurses were that cared for them, what the doctors did when they were there. And just, it's like, I, they will go on and on and want to kind of expunge their experience, so to speak. (laughs) And, and that's part of being supportive for them is letting them let go of all of that. Some of it, they don't want their families to hear. Oh, right. Um, right. Okay. So I'm that unconditional person. You know, sometimes um, but anyway, I, I, I think about um, a, 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 the role, right? And I think about what it would feel like if I were sick and I had somebody call me and offer the same support. It would be somewhat incredulous to think, wait a minute, who, who are you? Wait, and you're calling yeah. why? And you don't cost anything? <laughs> and okay. It, yeah. yeah, it's like I won the lottery. Well, somehow. <clears throat> Yeah. A guy said to me the other day, I have never had anybody in healthcare call me without me calling them to initiate that call. Mm. Like you called me just out of the blue and here you were and you were like running around doing stuff and helping me. And he said, uh, it was crazy. It, it, I, and people say, I can't believe I have this benefit and I didn't even know it. Um, right. And that's, you know, well, we've been there, is. what, two years and, and, you yeah. know, we'll, two years, it's a lot of people to get. Um, and, and I often say you, you don't need us until you need us, which is when you're in the healthcare exactly. system. If you're healthy, you, you know, you, you shouldn't need us. And, and maybe you don't know about, about yes. us, but yes. when you and are sick, my we'll patient, yeah, my patient's husband said today was, you know, Andy, one thing you taught me is you don't know what you don't know. And it takes someone like you to make sure that I know what I don't know, you know? Right. Right. He, he thought, I, oh, I had this down. I was going to, it. no, it was, I didn't really have it down. And it was you coming here and showing me, oh my gosh, I don't really know what's happening right. here. Well, and so, why should um, they, anyway. right, Andy? I mean, why should they? Right, they're, they should Right. We're, we're trained nurses. You have 32 years. I have 36. I mean, you know, there's a lot to be said for experience in the healthcare system. And I think most patients don't have that wherewithal, not, and it's not bad. It's just, they haven't, they don't work there. They work in a grocery store, you know? So, um, so, so I want to talk about this, this case that you had uh, been talking about with us. uh, And, and um, it's a, a fantastic positive patient story. Um, that I was eager to have you on the podcast so you could tell it in your own words. Yeah, I I just I realized too it's it's our anniversary this next <laughs> month. We met it. We met it. It's our one one year anniversary in March when she met she and I met uh, when she was admitted for a gastrointestinal bleed. Um, and this is a young thirty nine year old woman. I mean, with little health she takes no she took no medications when I met her wow. so um I it was back then we were doing these these where we would drop a flyer in our card and a little note to the hospital and then I would follow up either that day or the next day um I did that with her but I called right away and she answered the hospital oh no I remember I called her husband first and he said oh call her at the hospital thank you yes call her at the hospital and I called her and we hit it off we just she just I just started asking questions she just started opening up I learned a lot about her in that first call Um, but strangely enough never it was just gee I believe there was no talk of the fact that she had liver disease and so I just thought, oh, it's a GI bleed, da 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 da. How are you doing, GI bleed? Um, but it was way, easy, way, way easy more for you than to that. say, Andy. Easy for you. To yeah, say. I know, I know, I know. But I thought, thirty-nine year old GI bleed, hemorrhoid, no big deal. You know, that's it'll be fine. Well, um, she discharged home. I called her about two days after the discharge and things were not going well. She was bleeding, quite frankly, again. She was also starting to retain fluid 
Mm. And that when I I said fluid, what are your fluid? It was her face, her hands, her feet, mm. her belly was ginormous. Mm. And um, they she I said you have to go back to the hospital. I can't. You know you're bleeding, you're swollen. You know. And so sure enough, they went in. Her blood counts were very low. They gave her a lot of diuretics. She had fluid in her lungs, her heart, all her extremities her liver was failing and um that's why she was bleeding as well her her INR was very high and she, so she was wasn't co- coagulating her blood was thin and, and and so she she was bleeding so you so even though she went in with the GI bleed the initial admission didn't pick up on the fact that her labs that her oh. liver well, was failing she didn't pick up on it and she, well, I had only spoken to her, right? Okay. She didn't put the two and two together. She didn't talk about her liver at all. I didn't even know about it. Well, um, but, and, but again, back to your original point, why should she? And if the, if the physicians and yeah. clinicians weren't telling her and they discharged her, she assumes that they everything's did. okay. Yeah, yeah. And they discharged her without the bleeding it was interesting too because this gal's a Jehovah's Witness, so she doesn't do blood transfusions. So I was also really concerned with the fact that her hemoglobin was so low, like in the seven, like it was eight, I think, when she left. But you know, that's eight is not normal. That's a low normal. And well, it's actually eleven, I think, is 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 the the normal hemoglobin, low normal. So she was low. And they just let her go home with iron supplements and said, okay, you know, follow up with um, G- GI. So that's what I'm hearing. Oh, follow up with GI. So I didn't hear follow up with hepatology. I just heard follow up with GI. So I'm like, oh, okay. And um, when she went in this time, it was a, it, a way different situation. They... Um, did I think we ended up doing a liver biopsy, which then showed that she did indeed have significant cirrhosis of the liver, stage four liver wow. disease. And, um, you know, the, the, the next step down the road um, would be a transplant. Um, but that was way down the road. She's a Jehovah's Witness, doesn't take blood transfusions. There's that issue. But um, so here we were. And she calls me. This is, I will never forget this conversation. She was in, still in the hospital. She calls me and she says, so do you know anything about setting up hospice? And I went, well, yeah, I know about hospice, but what does that have to do with you? Well, they just told me I have less than six months to live. Oh, my God. And I was wondering if you could help Lee and I set up hospice. And I went, no. (laughs) I just (laughs) flat out and I said, no, I am not going to do that. We are going to go see this hepatologist who's going to tell us how, what the things that we need to do to get you better. And that's what we're going to do. We're not going to go see him to to go on hospice. I was not going to have it. And we were just talking about that the other day and kind of laughing about it. And she said, yeah, when you said no, I was like, what? Well, what? Please? You know? <laughs> Please help me? And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. And so we just. We went to the hepatologist, who I've got to say is one of my favorite clinicians right now. He is absolutely amazing. So anybody, even if they live in Seattle, I would send them to him in Puyallup because I just love him that much. He's just and sensitive, Pu- caring. Puyallup is is, a, is south of Seattle. Oh, is that right? South Seattle. Yeah. South Seattle. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you and, say, and he was. When you say hepatologist, that's the liver specialist, right? Yes, a liver specialist, yes. Okay. And he he himself doesn't, 
all the all the transplants and everything go to University of Washington, and if they refuse you at UW, you go to Swedish. And so, um, this was kind of our stepping point to the possibility of transplant. Like he was going to help us to determine whether she okay. would, you know, be eligible or what other things we could do. And so we went to see him, and um, she was highly motivated. She has a son. She just um, she helps to take care of her niece um, as well. And so she and she, you know, she's young. She's only forty now. She just turned forty. Wow. And so um, we kind of went in there together, and he said, "This is what you have to do." She had already stopped drinking and really she wasn't a big drinker she never was it it was in her 20s but she wasn't a heavy drinker she's i've had alcoholic cirrhosis patients who are heavy drinkers and and will say to me when i ask do you drink and they go oh yeah yeah i drink (laughs) she was not like that i as a matter of fact suspected she was more that this was her fatty liver and just a whole conundrum of things. I do not, I'm, I'm to this day, I, I argue with him about the cirrhosis issue, but at any rate, <laughs> we put her on a Mediterranean diet. Okay. We put her on diuretics. And she, diuretics are um, designed to they get rid of the fluid, keep yep. that fluid down so that okay. she physically didn't have her heart pumping against all this extra fluid and all these other things. And her willingness to abstain from alcohol, take all the medications. We got a colorectal exam so that we could fix her issue with her lower bowel. And um, we just, she just did everything just the provider told her to do, everything I suggested, you know, and, and just kept at it and kept at it. She had, when I brought her in, I think initially her MELD score was, which is a, it's a score that they score how severe your cirrhosis is, your liver failure. Okay. And so she, it's like zero to like 40 and 40 is like death or something. And she was at at 38 or around 38, 35. And she had, it was like, Oh, it's just a huge person. I I have it in my chart. I should, I should pull it out. It's like she had a 20% chance uh, or a, Oh darn it. I wish I could remember this. I sent it to you too. It was her MEL score was 38 and she had, Oh, she had three, uh, a hundred percent chance of dying in three months with a wow. MELD score of 35 to 38. Her MELD score now is five. She has zero wow. percent chance of dying in three months. Wow. So that's how far she's come. She lost too much weight now. She's starting to, she needs to gain a little bit back, but she lost over 25, 30 pounds. Wow. And a lot of that was the water that she was carrying around from the liver failure. Wow. But, um, she stopped bleeding. She, her gum stopped bleeding. She was able to like walk distances. And I, this is what I told you. I told you she walked in Costco. I was <laughs> like, everybody's dream car. I can walk in Costco now. And these are the things she's in physical therapy. She's getting, you know, she's just, she looks fantastic. Yeah, um, I I remember the um, the healthy. photos that you sent, right? The before and after photos, mm-hmm. which were yeah. so compelling. I, it it was yeah. like, whoa, this is the same woman. Yikes! So yeah. uh, kudos to her. I she mean, says, geez. "Yeah," she says, "I have an even better picture now, Andy. I just got my hair done, and <laughs> and her skin. That's the other thing is her skin cleared up." She's like, it's, it's amazing how sick she was. Um, did she feel, just, Andy, did she feel bad? I mean, you said she didn't really have, uh-huh. she wasn't really healthy, right? I mean, I'm sorry, she wasn't on meds, right? She was, you know, living a normal life, drinking, I guess, you know, socially, but did she feel yeah. bad? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fatigued all the time. Okay. Tired all the time. 
just, you know, could barely get up to walk across the room. Mm. She also had really bad neuropathies, which is like a in your her feet. Um, and we don't quite know where that came from and still don't. And we're still doing it's like pins and needles in the bottoms of your feet. Okay. And that limited her mobility, too. So she, you know, and that's getting a little bit better, too, without anything. I mean, they tried some stuff, but it always doped her up too much. And so she hated that because she already felt. And one thing I will say, too, that I noticed that's getting a little better is she had very poor short term memory. She um, Mm. when you when you first met her. Like, yeah, she, it's hard for her to remember things, conversations that we had had even um, at times in the hospital. She, it was hard for her to remember everything mm-hmm. that we had talked about because the liver also increases ammonia levels and other things, and she's just having a hard time processing things as well. So uh. that has also improved a lot. Um and she still jokes about it on and off about it, telling me to write everything down because she can't remember anything. But she does remember things better. But so it's in, all encompassing, you know. It well, just took in, her, her life over. Yeah, in, in many ways, and I know we see this a lot with patients that, you know, she may not have been aware of it, but she develops a GI bleed and presents to the hospital kind of as a, as a, a warning sign, right, or a wake-up call. Like, hey, pay attention to yeah. this, right? So. Yeah. Right. And then you dig a little deeper. It's like you hear patients who are in a car accident and they do an x-ray and, you know, just to check and voila, they find something. So I always think that, you know, the, the, the Lord works in mysterious ways to kind of identify people who need help. And in this case, you know, she, with all the symptoms she was having, but she probably thought, yeah, it's, you know, typical, I'm 39, it's COVID, you know, I'm tired, I'm depressed, you know, I can't remember things. Yeah. you probably yeah. blow it and, off and to all the other she, things. She also stopped menstruating altogether. I mean, this is oh. how sick her body was. Wow. So she just, yeah, and that was another thing that started up again is she's actually menstruating again and mm. has hormones raging through her, she says. One minute I want to kill my husband, the next <laughs> minute I want to kiss him. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, she can't. It's like, it's back, Andy. It's back. Right. Careful. <laughs> so. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah, right. right. But, <laughs> but it's, yeah. So, so the, the, uh, the hepatologist or the liver doctor, um, talked with her, set her on course to, did you ever work with a nutritionist yeah. or was he the one that really told her the Mediterranean diet was the way to go? Like, what was the. Well, it's funny because she's very food conscious she actually she's she's gone further than the mediterranean and has done this this she doesn't like the dairy there's a lot of dairy in mediterranean so she's almost on what is it when they just eat nuts and fruit and i i'm not a dietitian <laughs> i am terrible at diet stuff um but she took that on and did all this research and all she sent me pictures of all the food that she was she was making mm-hmm. and it just just all fresh and okay. and using grains and not dairy and you know keeping that low fat and all natural foods no sugar doesn't eat sugar okay. i mean she's really that is a big change for her wow you know does her to, husband to, uh, is he following is he following the same diet yes yeah, the, and her ten, I think he's 10, her 10-year-old son. I mean, she does all the meals. Wow. So um, they eat what she eats now. So the family's healthy. She likes supplements too, like lots of vitamins. She takes different stuff that I don't even know what they are. And I. <laughs> but, and she, she thinks like she's using both Western and naturopathic medicine. Okay. And they're not interfering with each other. They're not, you know, it, there's the diuretic is doing the diuretic stuff and she's not doing anything else to interfere with that process. Right. Okay. So she's very careful about what she takes and how it works. Um, 
and of her liver. Oh my gosh, she reads every label, every label, anything that says maybe harmful to your liver. Oh, nope, can't take that. Uh, you know, so okay. she's very conscious about her liver and um, recently was having some liver pain and um, called me just, Andy, what should I go see? Jeff, go see our provider. And okay. she got lab work. It was rock, rock solid. It's even better than it was uh, three months ago. So oh. she's doing really well. Has she, and you said she quit drinking? Yeah. Before I'd even met her, she had stopped drinking because she knew, okay. I mean, she's a mom and she, it's not, she was not in her twenties anymore. There, she had right. a family and it wasn't a priority as it was in her twenties, you know? She did a lot of that in her 20s. Wow. And think yeah. about the damage, right? We all, you know, we all have a cocktail now and then, but um, yeah, for some folks, it's dangerous. And and that's the key to all of this. And I keep telling her that too, is this is every disease process is an individual process for your certain body. You can't... Th- some people, I mean, you can say, yeah, a gallbladder, you're going to have right upper quadrant pain and nausea and fever, but then you have weird symptoms, like it's on the other side or something. And, and, you know, or nothing, no individuals, people do not do things the same way. They do not do liver failure the same way. They don't do mm-hmm. recovery the same way, you know, but mm-hmm. I, I just feel like it's, I can't predict sometimes. Okay. And um, I was surprised when we went back to, to the hepatologist and her labs looked so good. I was, whoa, I, <laughs> you know, and, and now I think we need to, now that it's been a year, I think we need to, to celebrate with a smoothie or something, you know? <laughs> at the very least. I, at the I am very, very least. excited. I, yeah, I hadn't realized it was a year until I just opened up her chart right before we were talking. <laughs> so, but, so do you, when yeah. when when you remind her of the initial call that not the initial but the call that she made asking, "Can you help me set up hospice?" Like what a journey yeah. she's had in the last year. Yeah. That, that And is... what if I had said, "Sure." Right. And what if I had said, you know, or I I hadn't dug deeper. Like, yeah, she may, I mean, I had just been through a liver failure hospice death and right before I met her. And I saw that woman do nothing, just die. Okay. And I didn't like that. And I, I saw, when I saw her and I heard her say that, I was like, no, I am, no, Uh (laughs) we are not going to do this again. (laughs) And she was Uh highly motivated and said, okay, yes, Uh thank you. Really? But when we talked about it uh, just the other day, she was like, I didn't realize she was like, well, wait, please, Andy, will you please? (laughs) Like, I was saying, no, I wasn't going to help her. Right. No way. No way. I'm putting you on my back (laughs) and I'm carrying you over the finish line. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, think about the. I think that she, her mother actually, I met her mother the other day too. So I, and she was very appreciative of not giving up on her and, you know, sticking it out. (laughs) I can't imagine how, how grateful I, I, right. To have somebody even listen, even if you said no and got her through to a point where, okay, yeah, you're right. Maybe you do need hot. Like there would have been another conversation, but at that moment in time, you, it was so early in the diagnosis. And so. Yeah. Kind of premature, perhaps, to say it's time for hospice. Yes, that- it was. And I think what they were trying to do, Betty, was scare her straight. And oh. we're saying to her, and she just took it as, oh, wow, I'm dying. I need hospice. Because docs don't, I, sometimes they just walk in and they think what they're doing by saying, you're going to die in six months, is to motivate you. But oftentimes people don't don't get that from that. And she right. didn't, she was like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to be dead in six months. Right. And that's all she heard. 
Right. Right. She didn't hear if you do X, Y, Z, you might live longer. All she heard was you're going to die. Right. And so I had to deconstruct that. And and I I just saw these. I've been around doctors. I come from a teaching university hospital. They. I'm sure that was a resident. I just felt, I just think that it was not someone who was well versed in trying to motivate people to get better. You know what I mean? You don't tell people. I don't know. I didn't like that. So I <laughs> he's just not going to take that as the answer. <laughs> well, um, lucky for her, I I didn't. right? Lucky for her that that she met you and and really, I mean, think about the timing of yeah. that and the serendipity of that. Uh, and uh, now yeah. a year later, yeah. you know, she's, she's healthy. Yeah. She, she's, she's, yeah. I can't even imagine how you wrap your head around that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, it's really exciting. So I, I love, and this again is why I'm a nurse. It's right. just, and I, you know, I really am truly happy for her. I mean, like I am just thrilled. Right. You know, and I don't even know her. I've met her a year ago. <laughs> but well, I, but I, think I, about wait I, a minute. Think about the you know, the intimacy, right? The the intimate yeah. relationship that you've had. It, you know, you kind of yeah. hit the ground running, and the, you know, on a call saying, I, I, "Can you help me set up hospice?" You're like, "No." I mean, that's <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to become your best friend, and I'm going to get you through yeah. this. Right. That's yeah. a powerful yeah. relationship and one that you should not take lightly. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, so is, is this, you know, I, I don't know what the takeaway is for for our listeners who may be facing something like this. But certainly I hear in your in your story, you know, don't don't take it for granted. Like what the doctor says. Ask questions. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I, you know, if if the hepatologist, the liver doctor that we saw had not, or he was, he's a PA, wasn't so absolutely wonderful, I would have taken her somewhere else. Okay. But he, I felt like what he said to her, his plan, you know, well, we'll, we'll see what this does, and then we'll refer to University of Washington. You know, it's. But let's let's give this a try and see. You're not you. She wasn't at the right meld score to be referred yet. Okay. You have to be really sick, or actually really better. At, at a, she wasn't. She was too sick, I think, at that point, and so she had to get down to a certain level, and then she could be referred for transplant. Okay, right. But what she did was just keep going down and down and down, and got herself better. So, and she has. It's the cutest thing because he gave her a graft when we went and saw and showed her on a grass, this is where you were. And then the grass just does this nose dive. And this is where <laughs> you are now. And so she took the grass and she drew on it. She's got like a, a smiley face at the lower end and the, like a sick looking face, like a, a, a Mr. Yuck sticker kind of face <laughs> on the, on the higher end. And so she had to show her family, all her friends and her family, how this uh, went. And so uh, she had to make art out of it so they would understand. And wow. it's pretty neat. It's pretty wow. neat. It, it, it's really, it's, it's such a great story. And I've, I've kind of listened to this through the year. And then when you told me, what, you know, that her melt score had, you know, gone down to five and that she, and when you showed the pictures, of her before and yeah. after, even without her new hairdo, uh, it was so yes. compelling. I thought, wow, this is amazing that yeah. this woman took it so yeah. seriously with your guidance. And, and like you said, did everything that she was supposed to do, which is a lesson mm-hmm. in itself, right? That, that there yeah. is, you know, uh, I, I know we talk a little bit about you are what you eat, but she clearly mm-hmm. took it seriously, stopped drinking, started eating right, and took care of her liver. Right. Is yeah. That yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Wow. Well, it, it's really it's a great story. Even hearing it again, uh, it is still a great story. And thank you uh, for sharing it, really. I, and I hope that, yeah. you know, I, I hope that she continues, you know, on some level to be involved with you, even to to talk, perhaps if you have other patients that can uh, benefit mm-hmm. from her experience. I, I'm sure she'd be willing yes. to share that forward. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because I I I mean, I we 
I always have liver patients. So, and I tell her story to them when okay. they call me and say, "Oh, you know, da da transplant." And I mean, I'm using her to motivate other patients and say, "This can be done. I've seen it." Okay. And you don't have to feel miserable. You can at least feel better, and let's right. work on feeling better. Great. So that's a great. And if you're good. committed to it. Yeah. Yeah, and and so, but yeah. but I think it's proof positive. It can be done, right? P you you can yeah. you know you can lose weight by by watching what you eat. You don't have to have gastric bypass. You can you know no. there are other ways, right? To 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 lower your blood pressure. You know you can stop smoking. Like there's you can improve your health by doing things without it's taking different. meds or having surgery. So kudos to That's to right. your patient and to you. Uh, and yeah. I hope that you enjoy your anniversary celebration. I know we're going to have to figure something out now. I'm super <laughs> excited because it wasn't uh, just today. I opened up her chart and went, oh, my gosh, it's been a year in March. Uh, so, that's great. yeah, well, I like anniversaries, but it's fun. Yeah. I have a lot of folks who I've had for a couple of years. And so, yeah. Time to time to celebrate and have that smoothie. Thank you um, for yeah. for sharing your story and uh, for being on. I always enjoy talking with you. You always tell a good story, Andy. Oh, I appreciate being on, and I hope people can learn something from this about yeah. having having resolve and you you know not not just letting a physician say something and giving into it. But actually, like, well, maybe that's not true. Maybe we can do this. Maybe, you know, looking right. for other opinions, looking for other solutions. And don't let one person dictate how right. you're going to spend the rest of your life. So, yeah, I mean, great, we have yeah. to trust our physicians. But if if we have doubt, we should run with that doubt and um, get better. Yeah. <laughs> here, here. Amen. Great way here, to end. Here. <laughs> Thank yeah. you again, Andy, Thank for joining you, us. Have a good night. Oh, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. If you have any questions that you would like us to address in a future episode, please email us at podcast at guardiannurses.com. That email again is podcast at guardiannurses.com. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us this week. You can find the Lighting Your Way podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher. If you liked what you heard, tell a friend and leave us a review. You can learn all about Guardian Nurses Healthcare Advocates on our website, guardiannurses.com. So until next time, find some joy in your life, pet all the good doggies and kitties, and remember to tell your people that you love them. Take care.